back. Wow. What a day. All right. Wow. What a morning. Beautiful. Welcome back. Thanks for coming. It's the Hotline Show, April 21st, 2024. Thanks for coming. You know how it works. People call number below in the description, leave a message, ask a question, whatever's on your mind. We come here, I answer it. Do you hear that? I've been hearing it all morning. Wait, wait, wait. I know what that is. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Hold on. See that? I nailed it. Check it out. The ruby crowned kinglet right in the Forsythia. What a song, what a sound. Unmistakable. I saw it there in the Forsythia last year too. Such a cool little bird. It's hard to get, it jumps all around. What? Do you hear that? It's just right here. Hold on a second. I'm not even gonna bring my real camera. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Hold on. I got it. Something's happening. Be right back. Whoa. Right there. We've got a new resident. The tree swallow. Those are so interesting. They dive bomb all around now, right in the studio. New resident. Amazing stuff. It's April 21st, like I said, but it feels like May. We're about a week ahead. Climate change, maybe, probably, definitely. Who knows? Just based on my records throughout the years, it seems to have shifted a little bit, but it depends. Not always, but definitely this year. It looks like May 1st now, but we're about a week before that. Anyway, let's get to it. First caller. Hello, Noah. It's Peter from Germany again. I was wondering if the films had arrived yet. I hope so, but I will be patient. Okay, I have a new question. You used to share very beautiful photos of an unreasonable amount of plants on the table in your house with the sunlight streaming in. It was very peaceful, like a painting. Do you still have plants and what is your favorite plant? Thank you. Peter from Germany again. Thank you for calling. Yes, I just went down to the post office and your package arrived. Here it is. I haven't opened it yet, so we're going to do it live right now. And for everyone out there wondering, is Peter from Germany actually from Germany? Well, this says it's from Berlin, so... I don't know. I mean, I guess it's possible he, he's running a whole international YouTube call and answer scam and I'm going to open this and something's going to come out and it's going to be recorded. So someone will come in here and find me and then they'll post it on YouTube and it'll be my most popular video. Okay, here we go. We're opening the box. Let's get this. People love unboxing stuff. Here we go. What do we got? Whoa, look at this. Roll of that stuff. Got something in here. Whoa, look at this. Some patches. Shoot digital? Question mark. Nine donkey. All right. Well, maybe we'll put that on the bag. This color. Mission, film, and a note. Let's see. Dear Noah, I hope you are very well. Here are 
here's some special film for your analog revival. I hope your contact still works and that you can make a video showing some of the pictures you make with this film. Thank you for making such wonderful videos. And then there's some German here that I can't read. Peter. Thank you, Peter. Yes, here's my contacts, the T2. Uh, someone actually just sent me a roll of film, so there is a roll of film in here. I've only shot seven exposures, but now I'm motivated. I'll, I'll run through this. I'll get rid of it, and then we'll get into this German film. And I don't know, I guess I'll shoot film again against everything I believe in. What's, what's in here? Wow, look at that. Thank you, Peter, so cool. This camera has gotten very cool. And it was probably because I shot with it 15 years ago that it's in vogue right now. Regarding the plants, yes. Uh, I love jade plants. It's a uh, succulent. Now, it took me a long time to get into plants and obviously I have a whole bunch and, you know, favorites, hard to pick favorites. But the jade, I have a special place in my heart for jades because when I first moved here, a friend came to visit and she gave me a, a, you know, a planter with some plants in it. And I just totally neglected it because at the time I didn't really care about plants. So then, I don't know, two, three, four years later, I looked at it after not caring. And this jade created this thick stem. That's what's so cool about jades is you give them time and they start hardening around the trunk and they become little trees. And after that, I was like, whoa, this is one of the coolest plants I've ever seen um, at the time. And I found this place in Pennsylvania called the Cactus Man who sold these huge 15, 20 year old jade plants. And I just got super into jades. Now, for people who live in warmer climates or California, these are basically like roadside weeds. But up here, they take a little bit more care. They can't freeze. If they freeze, they die. Like the second frost hits them, the whole thing is water. They're dead. It's, it's really upsetting when that happens, actually. I've lost a few to that, and I've learned. But it's just something that I like, and partly because jades thrive on neglect. So you barely have to water them. They'll do fine. They, they, wanna, they want sun, but not direct, direct sun. Like full sun, but in the shade. You'll find the spot. Lots of other plants I like, but that's one that's close to my heart. And you see a bunch of those in those photos that you're talking about. Peter, thanks again. You're always welcome to call back. Next caller. Hey, Noah, this is Hazlitt from uh, Kansas, USA again. I really appreciated your answer to my last question about the scrap wood. And uh, yeah, I did give a lot of it away over the past like year. I could have said that, but anyway, uh, that, that, that's kind of done at this point. Um, I have another sort of home decor question for you that is really polarizing among my friends. And um, that is that, so I've painted the cabinets in my kitchen a really bright green, like a, like a sort of green screen green. And I've done the walls too. So it's kind of just the whole room at this point is green screen green. And, uh, you know, the next step, and I have a red refrigerator, which is, you know, it's, it's, the class is a little bit, but it's not too bad. But the next step is to paint my ceiling the same green screen green. And my friends can't decide whether I should do it or not. And obviously, I'll do what I want, you know, but I, uh, I'm, I'm collecting opinions. So thanks. Thanks, you know, for continuing to do this show and uh, the newsletter. Bye. Hazlitt, thank you very much. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling again. Yes, do what you want. Trust your in instincts. If you believe it is the right thing to do, you should do it. If people try to talk you out of it, unless it's a very compelling reason, don't do it because you will regret it. I've been talked out of things that I knew were right and then I regret it afterwards. But if you make the choice and then you decide maybe it's not right, well, it was on you. I love green. I think you should paint your kitchen green. I love color now. Now, I don't know if I'd necessarily do green screen green. That's a pretty harsh green, but whatever. I mean, if that's what you're into right now, I mean, it sounds like you could maybe 
film something in there and then just turn the entire room into just a red refrigerator in the middle of space or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I would do if I were you, is do it. You know, you want to do it. Stop asking. Just believe in yourself. I think you got it. Send, send a photo. We'd love to see it. Next caller. Hi, Noah. It's Joe. I have a little bit of free time in the next coming days. And there's quite a few things that I want to do and try out, creatively speaking. But it's almost so many things that maybe I just end up doing none of them at all. I'm kind of wondering how you go about moving towards the next step with a project. When does it uh, transform from a thought into action? And what drives that? Joe, thanks for the call. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, the, the problem of having too many options, which is sometimes not really a problem, but it is a problem. And I'm often uh, dealing with that. I can pretty much do anything on any given day. So how do I nail down what it is that I'm going to work on? Well, I mean, I guess there's a calculation of like the joy to money, to time, to uh, fulfillment scenario. Now, you know, often th things that are going to pay me a lot of money, I'm going to do first. I'm just, it's just the way it works, it's how we keep things running here. But when it's not financially motivated, then it's just a matter of what I happen to be particularly interested in, in at that time. So, you know, it's hard. It's, it's whatever, whatever just is like the most obsessed feeling. You know, and we're coming on May here and birds are everywhere as we saw before. And I'm going to almost put everything aside to just literally go outside and try to find birds. Which, by the way, if people who aren't into birds, which I get, I wasn't into it for a long time and it took me a while and I thought it was corny and kind of is a little corny. But May is the month to see birds, especially in this area, because it's when they're migrating and the trees haven't fully leafed out yet. So they'll come through, but you can see them up, especially the birds that stay up high. The leaves don't block your view. So that's why this is like the hottest time to start bird watching. I know that doesn't have anything to do with your question, Joe, but maybe people out there just learn something new. Good luck with this. It's a good problem to have. I mean, just do what feels right. I, I keep trying to say this to people that they need to just trust their instincts. If you think it's right, it doesn't matter what other people think because you know, you know deep down inside what the right thing to do is. Next caller. Hey Noah, it's Chico from White River Junction, Vermont, a uh, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, and I was wondering as a photographer, a videographer, that you are, do you ever feel compelled to not document something? Do you uh, sometimes, even if it's something that might make a great video or photograph, you think, no, I just want to experience this with my eyeballs and my mind, and then it'll fade away without any tangible proof that it ever happened. Uh, all right. Well, I uh, love the show, and uh, talk to you later. Bye. Chica, thanks for the call. Do I ever feel compelled to not photograph things? Yes, I think so sometimes. Although when I don't, I end up regretting it later, maybe a little bit. But the main things I can think of right now off the top of my head are food and eating food. Uh, I find the, the act of making content based around food just revolting for some reason. And I know a lot of people do it and it's very popular and I'll probably end up doing it too because it is popular, but, and I have done it in the past and I'll continue to do it. And obviously when you get something very interesting, like some meal at a fancy place, the camera eats first, you know, you, you photograph that first, but I tend to just want to not, you know, and there's plenty of meals that I go and do and I don't document it and no one has to know and they're very special. And there's no proof of it. And that is how it is. Um, 
On top of that, funerals. Never felt comfortable filming at a funeral. It just doesn't feel right. Though sometimes, in retrospect, I regret not maybe taking a couple pictures or a little video, but I do have them in my memory. And, you know, what was I gonna do? Share those? Not really. Uh, but it's tough. As a photographer and someone who does document a lot of what I do, there's definitely a lot of things that I just choose not to. Concerts, it's just, you gotta see it. I mean, yeah, I'll film it, but I don't post it. You know, maybe I'll watch it later, but that's garbage. The, the experience of being there is way better than anything you could ever film, unless, of course, you're doing it right. Oh, last thing. You said videographer. Don't say that. I mean, and no, and no offense, a lot of people say this videographer, I find it almost insulting for some reason. Um, now, I'm a photographer, I make videos, but I would never say video. There's something about that word that like, just feels like it's a diminished in quality. Like, would you call a director of photography on a film a videographer? Not to say that I am that, but it just, it's like a guy with a, ca a camera and a backpack is a videographer. Um, but no, Chico, I'm, you know, this isn't to criticize you. This is for a lot of people out there who say this word and they'll, I'll even get emails or looking for a videographer. It's like you emailed the wrong person. Last call. Hey Noah, it's Bill reporting to you live from the eclipse at 23rd and 3rd or SVA way as it's known now. So I'm curious, was art school worth it for you? Would you recommend it to students? Curious to hear your thoughts. Thanks as always. Bill, thank you for the call and video message. As everyone could see, that's a video message. You can do that. Email me a video. It can, I guess it can be a landscape now if you want it to be. It could also be your face. I totally understand you not wanting to do that, but if you do, get creative. Wow, SVA way. That's my old alma mater. <laughs> SVA, 23rd and 3rd. I mean, the photo building was on 21st between 2nd and 3rd, but yeah, I'd go to the main building every now and then. Nice to see a citizen's bank on that corner. I think back then we had an amalgamated bank. Just, you know, banks. We need that. No one has ever been inside any of these places. Who goes in them? Um, it's cool that they put a SVA way thing up, I guess. You know, did you know that they had the opportunity to buy the uh, that huge building on the west side, the, uh, whatever, I'm not going to get into it. Do I regret or am I, do I recommend uh, art school? I don't know. This is tough. Part of me thinks like I didn't really get all that much out of art school besides just being filled with, you know, like big ego, low self-esteem, competitive bullshit art snobbery. A lot of my stuff was about art and not really commercially driven, although I did make a choice to take more commercial oriented classes so I could actually have a career. Uh, oftentimes I think maybe I should have gone to a real school, something that I would have learned about, I don't know, other stuff, English or, you know, and become a more well-rounded person. But Personally, I don't think I was capable of that. I'm just not a good student. I don't like to read or study. So that probably would have been a disaster and I would have maybe turned into alternative timeline Noah. Who knows? Um, I think that time of life, you're just figuring things out. So it's hard to be like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Stick with that. But for some reason, I had photo in my head and I did it and I stuck with it. And that being there just sort of meant for whatever reason, like that's what I was doing. And because of that, I was in the industry. And of course, in New York, where photo was very big. I mean, there's a lot in LA now, but this was before, before that. Uh, it just felt like a good place to be and start. And if you were going to do that, it made sense. You were just sort of in that network. The price calculation. Now, when I left school, I think I had like 
25 or 28 thousand dollars in debt for four years now um i just paid finished paying that off a couple of years ago but that's tough and i know it's gotten way more expensive and is it worth it and will you ever be able to pay that off i don't know i think if you have wealthy parents you should absolutely do it if you're gonna take out loans it might be tough that said i have a friend who went to sva he told me when he graduated he had over a hundred thousand in debt but he has since become a really successful filmmaker commercial director and he's paid that off so you know maybe it works out i mean you just gotta work hard but there's a lot of things to calculate here um i'd say maybe it dep it depends but I, and i know that's hard that's not a good answer but would i do it again probably not but maybe yeah i don't know i don't know yeah you know, I learned, I learned all film and then literally I graduated and it became digital. So talk about useless. Bill, thank you. Thank you to everyone who's called. That was the hotline show. The number is below. Call, leave a message. We need more calls. Subscribe to my newsletter. Do the other stuff. Like, subscribe. Take a walk. Go birding. We'll see you next time. Maybe.